convex mirrors. A convex mirror has the reflective portion on this side. So this is the back of the mirror. So you can draw your little dashes if you want to remember that. If an object is in front of a convex mirror, the focal point is back here on the dark side of the mirror. Remember, that's going to give us a negative focal length. The first thing we're going to do is draw a ray that goes towards the focal point, see? But as soon as it hits the mirror, it is going to bounce off parallel to the uh, principal axis. The light red line helps us line up the incident ray with the focal point. But you want to make sure you don't like finish this line, right? This line is not part of it. That line is the reflected ray. All right, next, from the top of the object, you go parallel to the principal axis. Once it hits the mirror, it's going to go through the focal point. Remember, this is not a real ray. The real ray is going to reflect off this way. Remember, it's going to abide by the law of reflection. So if that's the normal line, this angle is going to equal that angle. But you can use this focal point here as your guide to figure out exactly where that line is going to be. So these two rays, these reflected rays, one is here, one is here. You can see on the light side of the mirror, they diverge. They do not form a real image. Again, if the rays do not intersect on the light side of the mirror, we are going to end up with a virtual image. What we do is we trace back or dash back the reflected rays. Make sure that you are dashing back the reflected rays, not the incident rays. So here the purple ray, it bounced off the mirror this way, which means we trace back the reflected ray through the focal point. The red ray here, it bounced off this way, which means we are going to dash back the reflected ray. And that is going to give us our image. You can see this image is demagnified. It's smaller than the object. It is virtual since it's on the dark side of the mirror, and it is upright. In summary, for concave mirrors, if the object is between the mirror and the focal point, that image will be magnified, virtual, and upright. If the object's between the focal point and the center of curvature, the image will be magnified, real, and inverted. If the object is beyond the center of curvature, the image will be demagnified, real, and inverted. For convex mirrors, the image is always demagnified, virtual, and upright. You don't need to memorize this information. Always draw a ray diagram. The mirror equation shows why convex mirrors always form demagnified, virtual, and upright images, which makes them useful for security mirrors and passenger side view mirrors in vehicles. The focal length is negative, as it is in back of the mirror. Since object distance S sub O is always positive as the object is in front of the mirror, that means that S sub I has to be negative in order for the mirror equation to work. The negative value for S sub I means that the image will always be in back of the mirror, a virtual image, regardless of the object's distance from the mirror. A 17.5 centimeter tall candle is located 7.6 centimeters from a convex mirror that has a focal length of 31 centimeters. Describe the image formed in terms of real or virtual, location, magnification, and image height. First, we're going to use the mirror equation to solve for the image distance. So algebraically, we've done this before in this presentation. We're going to solve this for S sub i. All right, next, we substitute in our givens. And the most important thing to remember is that since this is a convex mirror, the focal length will be negative. So you're going to have a negative sign in here. You're going to have another one there. The image will be 6.1 centimeters behind the mirror. Therefore, it is a virtual image. All right, to see if the image is bigger or smaller, we can use the magnification equation. So we have these two pieces of information. So we can just plug them in here. So the negative sign doesn't really matter in this case because it's absolute value here. But we have that the magnification is 0.803, which means it's less than 1, which means the image is demagnified. It is smaller than the object. 
Next, we solve for image height. Now we have this piece of information, this piece of information, this piece of information. We also have this piece of information. So we're just going to take these pieces, solve them for h sub i. Plug in our info and we get 14.1 centimeters. The image height is 14.1 centimeters, which makes sense because it is shorter than the original object. Here is a ray diagram confirming the results. We have an image that is virtual, so it's on the dark side of the mirror. It is smaller and it is upright. 